First time using the webcam, I should probably stop cutting my own hair. But anyways, let's talk about async await. So why do we use async await, specifically in .NET desktop applications? So for context, async await is basically the standard for executing long running operations in all sorts of languages, JavaScript, .NET, etc. It allows us to perform long running operations asynchronously, of course, which means we don't block the main thread and it allows us to do other things in our application while the original long running operation is still working. But what's the point? We usually don't really ask that question, especially since again, async await is pretty much the standard. We go to it by default pretty much all the time. But I was surprised when I recently got a question asking, why are we always using async await for .NET desktop applications? Why don't we just block the UI, which was pretty common in like the WinForms day? Why don't we just do that nowadays? Why is modern .NET desktop development always using async await? And honestly, I wasn't really sure how to answer this question off the top of my head because I haven't used non-async await for long running operations in a .NET desktop application in so long. So let's hop into a demo. All right, so I have this example WPF application and what we're doing is loading some cat facts. So we're making a request to an API to load cat facts and we populate two lists. There's gonna be a list over here and a list over here. And this all takes place when we click this load cat facts button. So right now we're kicking off this load cat facts command when we click that button and that executes the sub commands to load each of the cat fact lists. And right now we're doing this synchronously. So as you can see, these are voids and we're wrapping what was originally an async operation. We're wrapping that in the task.run and then calling get awaiter, get result. And instead of getting a task back, we get the actual cat facts list. And we're doing this for each of our cat fact listing. And honestly, I've also hard coded a five second timeout for each of these. So let's see how this works and we'll see our first issue. So we're gonna load cat facts, we're loading, can't click anything, can't even close the application, can't do anything, can't click again, can't move the application, couldn't do anything else in the application if we had other things on the screen. And then finally the cat facts load. And even after they loaded, this is still trying to catch up from all the clicking we did previously. There we go, finally caught up. So there's the first issue with not using async await. Pretty clear, terrible UX. We can't do anything else in the application while the long running operation is running because we block the main thread, which is hosting our UI. So we can't do anything else on the UI. Not very great. So that takes care of the first issue, which is one of the biggest. Of course it is, this was called out in the comment, like, isn't that kind of a good thing? Like we don't want the user to do anything else while the application is working on something. And yes, that's true. It's just not a very pleasant experience when we're just blocking the entire UI. There's a better way to do it. And we'll see that when we move back to async await later in the demo. So let's get into the next issue. So as we see, each of these queries takes five seconds. We've hard coded that. So when we execute those, let's bring this over here, load catfax, take a look over here when we start this. So at seven seconds, we start, we're gonna wait. And when is this gonna finish? Didn't finish at 12 seconds, which would have been five seconds after we started. It finishes 10 seconds after we start. And this is the next issue with async await, and that is performance. So if each of these commands were async, we'd be able to run those in parallel. And then instead of this whole thing taking five seconds, or I mean 10 seconds when we're doing this synchronously, it would take only five seconds because we'd be running each of these asynchronously in parallel. So performance, not being able to run things in parallel, not a great experience with not using async await. And that brings us to the last issue with running this synchronously and not using async await. And that is, it's just not pleasant to write. Like async await, is wonderful syntactical syntaxical sugar what do you say i don't even know if that's right and we should use it it's magical it's easy to use and allows us to run long running operations asynchronously without blocking the ui so let's get rid of all this task that run nonsense all this get away or get result stuff that we should really never use let's also do this for the other catfax query and let's make these async awesome hooray and as you can see it's easier to write all we do is throw a, a weight in there. Great syntactical sugar. I hope I'm saying that right. I don't know. And then we just await and get the result back. No tasks running or weird stuff. It just looks better in the code. Again, async await is our friend. So now let's run this and we'll see the final solution. So we're using async await. The code looks prettier. Let's go back to the other issues with UX and performance. So we kick this off. Great UX. We get this loading state. We can move it around. 
and I didn't count where we started this, but as we can see, it didn't take 10 seconds. It took sometime less than that. I know because I started this and it finished before we got to 10 seconds. It took five seconds because we were able to run these asynchronously in parallel. And another benefit of that is say if one takes 10 seconds and the other takes five seconds, here we go, we kick this off. Again, great UX, we get the loading state. We can move the application around, still interact with it. And here we go, since we were running these in parallel and we're not blocking the UI, we can update this first list before the second list finishes. So in the end, we get great UX because we're not blocking the main UI thread and we can throw something on the screen while it's loading and the user can still interact with the application while some operation is still executing. We get good performance because we can run expensive or long running operations in parallel. And last but not least, the code looks better and we're fitting with the paradigm of asynchronous programming. So hopefully this helps solidify why you should be using async await in your own applications. Doesn't really matter what language we're working with or whether we're working with a .NET desktop application or an ASP.NET web application, you probably should be using async await. So if you're not already using it, use it.